Okay, so what I'm going to show you today is how to repair a D115 diaphragm pump from AgExcel. As you notice here, this is a D115 because we have three heads here, three diaphragms, and I'm going to show you how to replace the diaphragms. Now, when you look at the motor, if your oil looks golden, um, it's good, and we can change these diaphragms without having to change the oil, but if you ever see that your oil is a little bit, a little bit milky, then it's probably because a diaphragm is leaking, broken, worn out, and such, and so it'll leak into the oil and become milky. And in that case, case all you do is tear it apart, clean it up really well, and replace it. We have the kits here. This is the diaphragm kit for the D115, the diaphragm, and then the diaphragm for the air chamber. And then we also have an O-ring kit, so if you just want to replace the O-rings, and I'll show you what that looks like here soon. And then this is the valve kit as well looks just like a check valve, works like a check valve, inlet and outlet, but uh, we'll show that as well. So the first thing you want to do is notice there's oil in the, in the system, so uh, we can change it with oil in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off these three bolts, or nuts here, and be the same with all the other pumps, same type of setup, there's just more diaphragms. And so... We're going to take off this chamber. Sometimes it's a little hard to pull this apart. Sometimes it's not, but you just want to work it so that it comes out evenly. All the sides. What you don't want to do is that you don't want to stick a screwdriver in here and kind of uh, jar the edges up on there. So just kind of work it off gently. It'll come out slowly. There's no oil or anything that's going to come out of there. So there we go. So if you notice here, You'll see the, the valves in here, and there's obviously six valves that we're going to uh, replace here, should you have to replace them. There's three inlets and three outlets, and that basically allows the fluid to flow. And each valve has an O-ring on it. You see the O-ring here on each one of these. And so now that we've taken the head off, basically what a, a valve looks like, I'll show you here what we're looking for in a valve is... We're making sure that uh, the springs aren't cracked or broken. You see the spring is just like works just like a check valve. It's letting the liquid in and then closing it and letting it bypass. And so you want to check for any kind of wear on the stainless portion, any cracks in the plastic. If that all looks good, there's no need to replace it. But sometimes these springs will wear and they'll start to lose their tension. So it's a good practice to, to change these out at least every two seasons on your system okay so now that we have the valves off uh, you can work basically on any single head it doesn't matter which one but now we're going to take the, the diaphragm head off so you'll take off these got the four bolts off see how these are all loose and then we're going to pull this off here this cap off and it's the same principle just kind of work it off. Got the head here. You want to make sure there's no wear in here. Should you know some kind of particles get in there? The chambers. There's your there's your valve right there. You see how the valve works in there. So that just pops right out if you if you wanted to replace these valves. Pops right out. There's your O-ring on there. Make sure the seats are nice and well formed. They're not worn out, it's distorted in any way. So what we have here is a little nut and flange that, that uh, holds the diaphragm down. And so we're going to take this off. Once we take this off, obviously, if you look at it carefully, it'll go. It goes uh, dome up, so it's not going to go this way because it won't sit right on there. It looks like normally that it would go this way to hold the diaphragm down, but it doesn't go that way. There's a little flange inside of here see the groove it's it's flanged in here and that goes right around this diaphragm so that's going to sit nice and neat in there so we take this off and then your diaphragm will come off pretty easy so you might want to use a you might have to use just a slight edge screwdriver just gently pull that up but you'll take the diaphragm out and if you notice on the diaphragm there is some lettering in there one side says liquid and the other side says oil and obviously when you place this in the oil side is going to go down 
So this looks pretty good. Obviously it's new, but what we're looking for is any kind of wear in the piston there that uh, creates the suction on there. And then notice there's a groove on the inside here, and that's what fits for this uh, diaphragm to go in there and stay securely in there. So you take it out, you get your new diaphragm. I'll show you what it looks like here. This is off the diaphragm kit. Again, there's a liquid side. You can feel that lettering there. And then there's the oil side. So you just feel that to tell which side it goes on. So we're going to take this, put this back on. This is a new one. And we're going to make sure that it sets inside there. So push in a circular motion to make sure that sets in there nice and neat. And then we'll take it, kind of wipe off the excess oil on the edges here because we want a good seal. There's no gaskets. These are low pressure pumps. And so you're not gonna have any gaskets, but like I said, when we take these heads off, you don't want to put a screwdriver there and uh, jar these and, and make a little edges on there. You wanna make sure that stays nice and clean. Um, so we'll clean this up a little bit here. We'll put our support back down again. The groove fits right inside there. And then we'll get the bolt, and you'll feel the thread set. Now once that's set, there's, tight is tight. So that's tight. That's all you need there. Don't need to torque it down. Don't need to uh, tighten it down excessively. Once you've cracked, uh, cranked that down, that's good enough. And again, there's an edge here on the diaphragm. That edge and groove is going to fit right inside of this here. And so when we put the head back on, remember the way we took it apart, the valves are going to face all the other directions, same as the other direction of the other, other valves. You find that groove in there, you set that in there, you'll feel that the groove is now set, and then you'll press down. We'll come back in with our bolts. Make sure you can hand thread them first. You don't want to start it. This is all aluminum block, so you want to make sure that when you start the thread that they're started in there before you start to use your impact wrench on it. Those are all set, ready to go. 11 16 socket. Cross it like anything else. And go back and just tight. And that's all it takes to replace that diaphragm. And we're going to bring it back here. And to, uh, again, before you put this back together, clean your edges out. No dirt, no trash. You want to make sure before you take this apart, everything's clean. So you don't contaminate, contaminate the oil of it. Your diaphragms are all set. Again, take a look at the O-ring right here. You want to make sure your O-rings are set. Nothing's falling out so that when you put it back in, they secure themselves. So press down on the O-rings and once that's set there, take the head, find that bolt pattern once again, and just gently put it in and you'll tell immediately once it's set everything looks good there. If something's not fit right you're not going to get a good snug fit but you can feel that that's perfect right there. We'll get our nuts. Again hand tighten these first so that you don't strip it out. Make sure you're on the thread. Okay. okay, so now that we've hand tightened these, we're going to go back in and tighten this back up. And again, tight is tight. So all we got to do is just check it. That's tight. And that's all you need. Okay, so next, now that we have these tightened up, we're going to check and, re and or replace the diaphragm, air diaphragm, that we use to help stabilize the liquid. And the first thing we're going to do is let the air out. So it's just like a chuck. We can press down on that. You'll hear the air come out. We like to keep at least 15 pounds of pressure in there. That's how we set it going out of the factory. You can go as high as 30. And I'll explain here what this is for. But I'm going to show you first what it looks like inside the, the chamber here. So we're going to take these bolts off. Now 
we have all these bolts off, we're going to pull the head off of the diaphragm, lay it down, and then we're going to grab this diaphragm and pull it out. And you'll notice the chamber here, there's liquid in the chamber, water, well, fertilizer, whatever you have. But basically what this diaphragm does is that it'll help stabilize your liquid. So you can see the little ports of where the liquid will come in, and those little ports will basically allow you to um, just help stabilize the liquid. So when the liquid comes through here, this diaphragm, it's going to push against the diaphragm. So d depending on the amount of air that we have in the chamber here that's pushing against that diaphragm will help stabilize the liquid. So sometimes what happens is, you know, if you have X amount of pressure in there and the liquid's coming through there, the diaphragm might wobble a little bit because it's the liquid's unstable and it's not letting it press on there. So you can put a little bit more pressure on there and that pressure will push against those holes and help stabilize the flow through the system. So sometimes you'll see the motor kind of jumping around a little bit and uh, that's usually usually caused by unstable liquid. And so by pushing against this with air, it'll help stabilize it. And sometimes taking air out of the diaphragm will help stabilize it. So you gotta have kind of try to have to find that sweet spot that allows your pump to not vibrate so much and have a, a lot more, more steadier flow. So this diaphragm comes in the kit brand new, so we want to check that as well. Make sure there's no torn or holes or tears in it, sorry, or any holes or anything like that, and that the edges of it look well, and so and it's uh, pretty flexible, not stiffened or hard, hardened. So we'll put the new one in there, press down on the edges, and then what we're going to do is, well, Ken, your valve is going to go up, and we're going to basically clean that off a little bit there. Put the cap back on. And again, hand tighten these so we don't strip out any of the threads here. Very simple to do. You really can't ruin anything on here. The only bad thing you probably could do is maybe put your head on backwards or upside down, but you'll notice that right away. Uh, so when you're taking it apart, just make sure that everything's in proportion to how you're going to put this back on. And then we'll tighten these up. And again, we'll do the last crank on it. Done. Done. And that's it. Now your system is all back together. You would do the same. So once this heads off, you do the same for each component. You don't have to worry about the oil. And again, to change the oil, there's your port down here. Take the nut off. It will drain the oil. And you, when you fill it back up, um, you want to get it about halfway. That's a good spot to have it. Higher or lower is not going to hurt it. We always like to see it halfway. So that's how you repair the diaphragms, valves, and O-rings on a Ag Excel D70 and 115, a 160, and a 250 pump. They're all the same, just have, some have more diaphragms than the others. Any questions, don't hesitate to call us at Ag Excel.